Hey guys, Jason Cotta here, fishing manager for the Orvis Shop over in Bellevue. Today I wanted to show you how to attach a stinger hook to a uh, Waddington shank or uh, one of the fish school's articulated shanks. And pretty much what this is, is the basis for all your intruder style flies. Whether it's an intruder, a hobo spay, a pick your pocket, um, this is going to be the base um, which you're going to work with. So the things you're going to need, you're going to need some articulated shanks. You're going to need some uh, octopus stinger hooks. These are the gamagatsus. Uh, we also have the uh, intruder hooks at the shop that you can use. You're going to want to get some 30 pound either braid or just fly line backing works great as well. And then some heavy thread. So let's uh, take all these, dive right into it, and I'll show you how to do this. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take my tying thread and start it at the front of the hook and go ahead and work it all the way back giving myself a nice little thread base. Now you have this little section here on that shank where the two wires kind of come together and I'm going to want to close that gap. So I'm going to tie that down nice and tight and really close that back loop off. Um, I'm using chartreuse thread here just so it's a little bit easier to see. Really you can use whatever color you want. If you're going to tie a black fly, in the end, use a uh, use black thread or purple thread. doesn't really matter because all of it's going to be covered up anyway. The next step is to take that braided fishing line or your fly line backing and go ahead and create a little loop. With that loop, what I'm going to do is actually pass it through the eye of the hook on that, uh, on that intruder hook, just like so. That's going to give me a loop, and then I'm going to pass the hook through the loop. So I have that nice little handshake knot there. All right? Now, go ahead and tie this in on top of the hook with that, um, with that stinger extending back as far as, you, uh, as far as you want it. At this point, I'm just going to make two or three tight wraps just to keep that in place. Now, these two tag ends you have of that braid or that um, backing, go ahead and put those through the eye of that shank and pull them down so that all lays right on top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that back, tie it down to the bottom, and then wrap forward and really make sure you're wrapping that in nice and tight. When you hook up with a fish, making sure that you stay connected with that fish is all going to depend on that not pulling out. So make sure you make this nice and durable so you don't lose that big winter steelhead of a lifetime. Once I've come forward I'm just gonna throw a few half hitches in there to finish that off. Trim my excess tying thread and then go ahead and trim your excess braid or backing, whichever you're using. And now, I'm going to take a little super glue and just coat that hook shank with super glue, just increasing the durability. And also, what I like to do is take a little super glue and go right along that backing. And when that sets, that's going to keep this, uh, this hook up a little bit more rigid so it's not going to foul around. So let's wait a second and see if that sets. All right. That's not going to set soon enough. But as soon as that super glue sets, that backing is going to be nice and stiff and that's going to help keep that hook from fouling around your leader or fouling around the fly. So there you have it. That's the basics of it. Really simple. Usually what I like to do is tie up a bunch of these and then go through and tie my actual flies on them instead of doing this, tying a fly, doing this, tying a fly. It's easier just to get in that production assembly line method. Uh, so there you have it. Spin up a few hobo spays, intruders, whatever you like. Go catch some winter steelhead.